Welcome back to Nickelodeon. This is Comic Corner Classic, last known classic. This is episode number 2467 and double show 2361. I'm basically talking about two epic collections. First Defenders and then a brand new one, Excalibur. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to discuss this one. But let's first talk about Defenders. Which I collect, this is called uh, Defenders Epic Collection Volume 6, issue, which uh, called the Six Figured Ham, which is 902 to 109, Marvel Team Up 101, and Captain America, and the Captain America issue. Uh, in the case of Marvel Team Up 101, that is simply a team, team up between Spider Man and Nighthawk. Yeah, it just teamed between two of them. Yeah, where the issue is written by Jane and Matias. Yeah, where like cows accused of murder, inspiring teams up with him to deal with the thread of the issue. It's a very interesting idea to include this in here because Nihalic remember the remember Defenders, so why not include him in here? But in the case of many issues themselves, 92 is the debut of the multi multi universal version of the of Eternity. Yep, that's what the issue is known for. The cover is basically a P his attorney is missing. Yeah, and find some other demons, and then by 93, we have Return Nebulon. For the first time since the Defenders Annual. Yep. That was last time I appeared. And then by 94, we have the debut of two, two important things here. Number one, we have debut of the Grey Gargoyle, Isaac Christians. Yes, he became this... He, he actually got... He's trying, he became, he, he, the reason why he's like this, he actually is a local lord of an area that the Defenders visit. We are taking the main villains of this story, basically the main villains of the story they make the debut here, the six-figure hand, led by Mephisto himself, who takes the form of a woman named Maya. Yep. And this group is pretty much the main villains from issue from this issue up until 99 and come back 103, and that's the last you see of six-figure hand. Yep, it's just a group of de demons led by Mephisto. Yep. And this is where we have a guest appearance by Dolly, who was a friend of Patsy's. Patsy Walker, Hellcat. Yeah, a really interesting storyline. We also involves guest appearances here in this storyline by Dracula. Yes, Dracula makes guest appearance in here, along with the Ghost Rider. Yep, the Ghost Rider. The Dracula happens issue 95, which is, this is basically something. Yeah, TV with freaking Dracula for an issue. That's awesome. And of course, 96, team up with the Ghost Rider. And 97, we have Devil Slayer join a team and, of course, deal with, still dealing with this group, the Six-Fingered Hand. Now, it leaves the team when he comes back. Teams of the Avengers take on more Six-Fingered Hand with basically taking on the freaking man thing. 99, of course, they take on... Well, it's for, it's for Maya and really Mephisto. Along with Satan, Santash, and Fog. 100 does not even deal with the six of their hand at all. Nope, it's basically... It's mostly put the Defenders versus... It's like the current Defenders versus the original... Well, some of the original lines. Basically, Defenders fight each other. In a cover, that's a clear homage to Uncanny X-Men 100. Which came out, like, just a few years before part of this. So, I'm saying leaves, we just cut back. Nighthawk leaves the team once again. And, of course, still bowing Satan in, in 101. And 102 focused all about Nighthawk. There was a woman named Mindy Williams. Who is a strange girlfriend of Kyle's. And I think that the Martin issue led into this one. Yeah. It did. And then by 103. We have basically taking out August Masters. And no living darkness. This character lead to Overmind join the group. Yep. Wait issue end of four. We have Beast join the roster. And here's a fun fact. He remains with the team up until it's a, its final issue. Yeah, 
He's here for the long haul. He basically requests our team. He's automatically accepted. No problem. 105, Son of Satan rejoins. Team don't line up this issue is Beast, Doctor Strange, the Son of Satan. Take out more demons. Now, 106 and the Captain America issue we'll discuss because it's a crossover. I've discussed already. In the case of 107, this is like right afterwards. It's mostly put basically the Defenders take on a more the Chancellors again and Korna. The Queen of the Norns, who is currently deceased in Thor Comics. 108 is simply put, Defenders still take on more of the Enchantress. And by 109, we have guest appearance by Spider-Man take on the Enchantress. And that's it. This overall was fantastic. Love these issues. Now, there is one more trail left to go for Defenders Volume 1, and that's the ninth Epic Collection. And that's it for Defenders Volume 1. You think, okay, so with Volume 1 be finished up, like, what's next? Well, there's still Volume 2 in the order. And that's it. No, seriously, that is it. There is nothing else else to discuss for Defenders. And what am I using to replace this one? I haven't decided yet, but now we're going to see Thor's replacement, Excalibur. Now I'm going to skip a couple issues in here, issues 6 and 7 because those are the Inferno Titans. But this is Excalibur Epic Collection Volume 1. The sword is drawn and the cover is taken from the, the Excalibur Special Edition book, which is the debut of Excalibur. Excalibur at the time the group was first founded was comprised of Nightcrawler, Kitty Pride, Rachel Gray, Captain Brynn, and Megan. Of course, we have the collaborative duties in this book with Chris Claremont, Michael Higgins, Alan Moore, Steve Craig, and Alan Davis. Alan Davis also has some artwork, too. Marshall Rogers, Rob Lim, Arthur Adams, who still does artwork this very day. Isn't that a shocker? He still does artwork? Yes, he does. Eric Larson, another guy who still does his work this very day because he's working on Savage Dragon. And Herb Champo. Okay. Now, the main issue themselves cover because basically this book collects the first 11 issues of Excalibur well, of the first volume of, of, of 25 along with Excalibur Special Edition Mojo Mayhem which is simply just features the X-Babies along with Marvel Comic Presents issues 31 through 30, not 38 along with the first two issues of Captain Britain, which is basically dealing with Captain Britain's debut appearance and his backstory, along with basically Mighty Word of Marvel issues 7, 14, and 15. Yep. Now, Excalibur is brought together because the Fallen Mutants pretty much had the X-Men supposedly die, so basically Kitty Pryde, Richard Gray, and Nightcrawler and team me up. It the, basically the premise of Excalibur is simply the Cat Bird comics works with X and comics, just merge the one. Excuse me, just by sheer coincidence. Chris Cam was working on this. He were he was working also working on. He was also continuing his run for Kenny X, which would last for two year, three years. And I think that's it because he already had left New Mutants at this point in time because I believe it was Louis Simonson or Anna Cynthia was writing the book at the time. I think it was Anne the Senti was writing the book. It wasn't Clem, was, it was Anne the Senti. But this is the only book he was writing at this point. Yep. It's weird the fact this issue came up just prior to the start of the main series. And this is basically them taking on the group known as uh, the Tacnict. Yeah. Their group of Captain, Mer Captain Britain villains. Yeah, also Lockheed joins the team too. Captain Britain himself last appeared in, in X-Men Annual number 11. And of course, this, this is leading to Excalibur's debut issue. I thought basically a special edition was basically what the cover comes from. No, it comes from Excalibur number 1, which this cover has been homaged a couple times over the years. Now, there is also a character named Courtney Ross, who was in fact Captain, who was also Brian's girlfriend. She gets killed off by issue 5. Yeah, 
She's not around very long. She was a long-standing character in Casper Comics since, like, practically almost his debut. And sadly put, she dies five issues in. There's also a shopping issue where basically, I think it's um, Rachel uh, Alter's uh, Katie Pride's outfit. There's also this funny issue where, like, this is quite interesting, where there's, like, the, the basically the Excalibur's lighthouse, basically their debut that they're headquartered in. Yes, their lighthouse. You're thinking, wait, lighthouse? Yes. Because that's pretty much in the way where Excalibur was based out of a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Which currently in the comics is it's still it basically Captain Britain lives there with his wife Mora, uh, excuse me Megan, and they have a daughter together, who talks. Which currently the place is gone now, but pretty much in a way this is basically their base operations throughout pretty much the entirety of the run. Yep. Yeah, it would appear through almost the entire run. At one point, they would stop using it. Because I think they moved. It basically, they would use it around issue 50. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because the, the lighthouse was destroyed. But we're here basically with first 11 issues here. But there's a lot of really fun stuff that happens in here. Because mostly put, it's basically X-Men characters working with Captain Britain to deal with his own villains. We also have this detective here in this book known as Di Thomas. Di Thomas was also a member of a group known as Knights of Pendragon. Yes. Now, he's the character in his first appearance in Marvel Preview number 3. Which is basically a Blade story, which I'll discuss at a later point. But yeah, he, he's he's here as a recurring character because he's, well, he's based in the UK. So, there's also one point where I think it's, um, he, he's he's here for the, he's over the first two issues. And then he's here for 5, 6, 9, 10, 27, 30... He, his parents were very sporadic in this book, but around like issue 60, that's when they pretty much stopped featuring him. Yeah, and Ninth Pen Drag was actually his book, kind of in a way. Well, like the very first volume was basically all his book. Mm hmm. That's pretty much exactly what the book was his book. Mm hmm. Yeah. But this book itself was just really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah and you might think okay who does do you find anybody else besides Captain Britain villains across these 11 issues well of course there's also the more comic presents issues I'll discuss those in a minute so they also got a vixen a woman named vixen there's also Juggernaut shows up in issue 3 which Wait, issue three? Yeah, also New Excalibur. He he joined the Excalibur. He actually left by issue three. Mm -hmm. Yep. They got Crazy Gang. There's also Arcade here as well. And, well, the Crazy Gang themselves, which are basically Captain, Captain Britain villains. They would appear just for these early issues, and they would they appear very sporadic. The most recent appearance actually was in Deadpool Marks for Money. Yeah, and skip over second seven because those are basically tie-ins to Inferno. As for issue number eight, it continues to take on a cameo by Superman and Lois Lane. Yeah, we have a cameo by Clark Kent. Yes. Yeah, basically issue eight is simply put, basically the Scholar Manhattan for an issue. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was really cool. Maybe the first appearance of the London branch of the Hellfire Club. Yeah. We also have the first appearance of Lightning Force. Yes, this evil version of Excalibur. Which don't really appear up much at all. They appear in issues 9 through 11. 
the World War Three one shot, and the final issue of the book, and that's Alex. What is it? The Marvel Comics issues is simply Excalibur versus a parody of the Looney Tunes. That is seriously what they do here. They have them take on this group, that this group of characters who are literally, like I mentioned, parody of the Looney Tunes. It's like there's an issue where they fight Fist the Cat. Yes, seriously. It is by far one of the most weirdest issues I have ever come across here. Because that's literally what Excalibur is doing for nine straight issues. The Loonies, aka the Looney Tunes. Yep, and they're only here for this storyline. Like here he remembers Gums Grammy. Who is literally Bugs Bunny? There's also Billy Bird. Who is Daffy Duck, Southpaw, Yosemite Sam, The Ham, Porky Pig, Tail Gunner, Road Runner, Rooster, Cockbird. And of course, he's he's a parody of Boghorn Langhorn. There is Rochester. Yes, a character named after an actual city. And this is the guy who's a parody of Sylvester the Cat. Yeah. And there's also Tweety, who is a parody of Tweety Bird. Who looks exactly like him, except he just, he just Tweety Bird with glasses, look like an older version of him. Like, what? Yeah, seriously. It is by far the most hilarious type of thing here. And it's mostly put arcade sick of these things on them for these nine straight issues. And that's it here for that. Yeah, really fun stuff here. Oh, I forgot to mention this. The cover hours. The front cover is Alan Davis, Paul Norney, and Matt Hagworth. The back cover of the book is Alan Davis and Paul Narney. Yep. By the way, I get this is called book a... Uh, I'm going to give it roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Okay, so... Excuse me. That's the episode of you. Next episode is going to be... I'm going to go ahead and do this. The best of the game, Academy. Okay, next to you. Bye.